and welcome to another wicked feed that is about Paris, about Paris locations. This one is by Paula McLean and it's called The Paris Wife and it's about Hadley Richardson and Ernest Hemingway. She is the Paris wife. Uh, Hemingway actually had four wives altogether, which is kind of sad, but uh, Hadley was his first. Chicago, 1920. Hadley Richardson is a quiet 28-year-old who has all but given up on love and happiness until she meets Ernest Hemingway. Following a whirlwind courtship and wedding, the pair set off say the pair set sail for Paris, where they become the golden couple in a lively and volatile group, the fabled Lost Generation. That includes Gertrude Stein, Ezra Pound, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. Though deeply in love, the Hemingways are ill-prepared for the hard-drinking, fast-living, and free-loving life of Jazz Age Paris, as Ernest struggles to find the voice that will earn him a place in history and pours himself into a novel that will become The Sun Also Rises, Hatley strives to hold on to her sense of self as her roles as wife, friend, and muse become more challenging. Eventually, they find themselves facing the ultimate crisis of their marriage, a deception that will lead to the unraveling of everything they have fought so hard for. The heartbreaking portrayal of love and torn loyalty, the Paris wife is all the more poignant because we know that, in the end, Hemingway wrote that he would rather have died than fallen in love with anyone but Hadley. So this is historical fiction, which I think I am becoming more and more fond of, and maybe more and more fond of Paris and different locations. It's a really great book. The first four chapters for me flew by. I couldn't believe what I was reading and having so much fun getting into the fictional head of Hadley. I'd like to share a couple quotes from this book. It's very, very fun. Um, I bought a handful of rat. Oh, she's talking about how she went to the market one of her first days in Paris. I bought a handful wrapped in newspaper and sat on the wall watching the barges move under Point Sully. The nest of fish was crisp under the coarse snow of salt and smelled so simple and good. I thought it might save my life just a little just for that moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ernest was sharing a glass of some sort of gracefully tinted liquor with Gertrude. I think I half fell in love with her that day from a distance and Ernest did too. When we walked home, he had much to say about her taste, which was innovative and impeccable. He also admired her breasts. This, 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 I'm not going to, mm, cutting that out. Okay. There's ones that I underline. Go in fear of abstractions. Don't tell readers what to think. Let the action speak for itself. So this is Ezra Pound's advice to Hemingway, at least via this book. Go in fear of abstractions. Don't tell readers what to think. Let the action speak for itself. So many times in this book that I wrote an easy solution to their problems. They should pray. Late that same night, when again we weren't sleeping for the fireworks and the drumming and the haruru dancing, Ernest said, what about Nicanor as a name for the baby? He'll be a fine Torito, no. Toriro, Toro, Tororo, Tororo. Mm -hmm. We've had some one, haven't we? He squeezed me tightly in his arms. It's not all over. Okay, so I'm really going to say this for real now. Hello. My hair's being kind of crazy. So Hemingway says, uh, or Hadley, excuse me, Hadley says, late that same night, when again we weren't sleeping for the fireworks and the drumming and the roo-roo dancing, Ernest said, 
What about Nicanor as a name for the baby? He'll be a fine Toro. Toro. Toro? Toro? I don't know how to say it. Ah. He'll be a fine Toro with a name with that name. He can't help it. We've had some fun, haven't we? He squeezed me tightly in his arms. It's not all over. No, but I figure I have to be steady when the baby comes. I'll earn the bread and be the papa, and there won't be time to think about what I want. For the first year, maybe, but not forever. <laughs> I love this part simply because, I don't know, maybe I was hungry while reading this passage, but it sounds so good to me. Um, I wanted musk melons and a really nice piece of cheese, coffee and good jam and waffles. I was so hungry thinking about this, I couldn't sleep. Waffles, I said to Ernest, as curled back near dawn. Wouldn't that be lovely? Hmm. I think so. Pregnant or not, waffles and butter is really, really good. There's lots of mentions of the people that they meet. that quote. Actually, let me tell you a little bit more about at least my reading with this book. And I absolutely enjoyed this tale, even though it's fiction, about Hadley and Hemingway. Um, the first four chapters really flew by the last couple chapters I did not enjoy. That's not because of like her style of writing, it's just because of the content. I was not super happy, but I did enjoy the epilogue and I'm glad it was there. Also, she does, Paula. Also, Paula. Also, Paula gives us a, a note from her. I'm really glad the epilogue was there. She does acknowledgments. Okay, a note on sources. It was important for me to render the particulars of their lives as accurately as possible and to follow the very well-documented historical record. The true story of the Hemingway's marriage was so dramatic and compelling and it has been so beautifully treated by Ernest Hemingway himself in A Movable Feast that my intentions became to push deeper into the emotional lives to of each to push deeper into the emotional lives of the characters and bring new insight to historical events while staying faithful to the facts and i really do appreciate that paula it is one note that i really really enjoyed i like learning new topics of figures and especially those who have gone to paris um, and so I was very happy to do lots of things that I'm going to have to edit out. Yay. There's a lot of uh, research and she does mention title of different books that she read, which might be interesting to read if you are a huge Hemingway fan or becoming a Hemingway fan. Um, Hadley is the heroine of A Movable Feast. In small scenes and exchanges of dialogue, Hemingway renders Hadley and their connection with a tenderness and poignancy that moved me, but also set my writer's mind ticking. Just who was Hadley Richardson? This is how she came up with the book and lots of research. <laughs> Here's the thing. Paula, our author, did not go to Paris to look at these locations until after compiling the manuscript and getting it all edited. As a celebration, she actually went to these different locations and like she saw the chipped blue door of their first apartment that they lived in, which I think Hadley described as dark and cold with funny angles. Um, but I love what she wrote here. She goes, I pushed all my anxiety to the side and surrendered to the demands of the book. A Starbucks in Cleveland is hardly a Parisian cafe. And yet, in a way, that didn't matter. 
Every day's work was like traveling back in time. I slipped through the miraculous portal to the Boulevard Montparnasse, where Hemingway was writing in the worn blue notebook and staring out the window into the rain. Hours vanished in the blink. Hours vanished in a blink as I deliciously, as I was, yeah. Hours vanished in a blink as I was deliciously swept away. And she ends her author's note by saying, um, talking to readers, she's talking about when she goes to conferences and stuff, or what was it? <laughs> Writing The Paris Wife has been the most rewarding experience of my professional life. She kind of explains how, and then goes, um, it keeps me ever connected to Hadley, Ernest, and their stirring love story. The journey goes on, and I'm happy and grateful you've come along for the ride. So thank you, Paula McLean, for this wonderful, wonderful book. It is called The Paris Wife, and it is all about Hemingway and Hadley and the 1920s Paris scene and the Jazz Age and what they considered or fabled the lost generation. I just want to say thank you. Uh, this has been a... I want to say thank you. This has been a wonderful read.